Movie Night with JL Media is back. Hamilton 16 IMAX is where we're doing it. Good, rich, quality theaters right here in beautiful Noblesville. Hamilton Town Center, Mandy Montgomery. Hey. Hey, dude. Hey. Is it cool up here or what? Oh, my goodness. Dude, we're here for the Power Rangers this week. And um, there's I so many you. Power Rangers around here. Pretty awesome. Dude, there's something, aren't they? But there's Disney princesses here. Go ahead and shake your head at me. Say, don't say Disney. <laughs> I know. But I said it. She doesn't. A royal princess. Thank you. Thank you. There's See, a royal princess here. <laughs> I tell she you is what, absolutely beautiful. Belle is here, and you can check out our Facebook page. There's already pictures with me and Belle. I'm a huge princess fan. I <laughs> bet you are. <laughs> She's to, awful pretty, though. To my right and your left, Miss Mandy, is Miss Rachel Friend of Fivish Girls. Fivish? I'm sorry. I can, you know, I was doing fine until I had to turn the microphone on. Are you on. sure that's Pepsi in your cup there? I, I can't say. <laughs> that that Jameson creeping up? Half of it's Pepsi. Anyway. <laughs> the Fivish Girls. Nope. <laughs> oh, my God. Fivish Fan Girls. Thank you. I, Rachel, I, say it one right more. We've got to turn around so I can read your chest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, the show was already <laughs> off the rails and we hadn't even announced it. <laughs> Five-ish fangirls podcast. Thank you, and I know it, too. You're a friend of mine. Five-ish yeah. fangirls. Why five-ish fangirls? I know the answer to that, too, but I'm going to mess it up. I'm sure I am. Well, the, the, the name is twofold. One is because there's supposed to be five of us, but sometimes there's, sometimes there's not. Uh -huh. Life gets in the way, unfortunately. Uh, so sometimes there's less than five, and therefore the ish. Do you ever do over five? Sometimes. Okay. I think the most we've ever had is eight. I oh, see. So that's very cool. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm gonna try. It's and, the ish. I'm gonna yes. try and reel it back in it's now. It's the ish, but it's also a nod to Doctor Who as well, which is a long story. But if you were a fan around the 50th anniversary when David Peter David Tennant, well, when Peter Davison did the the five-ish Doctors reboot. <laughs> oh. See, you start talking Doctor Who, my mind starts spinning. I have no <laughs> idea. That's your realm, darling. I'm completely lost that's, there. That's another show for another time. <laughs> the band Prosomnia. The front man is Shane. Hey, brother. How you doing, man? I got that right, right? Yes, <laughs> sir. Messed that up too bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just fine. And Bubby called me out on the whiskey in my pantry <laughs> over here. That is Somebody's got Joshua, call you out. better known as Bubby from the Brothers Footman. What's happening? How's everybody doing? Man, I appreciate you guys being here tonight. We're talking about the Power Rangers. You guys are Power Ranger fans? Oh, oh my yes. goodness. All day. All day. Okay, Listen, how much time do we have? Yeah. Just an hour. <laughs> Just an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we should be able to get through the first five episodes if we start now. Yeah. <laughs> 23 seasons of the Power Rangers, man. Where do you want to start? <laughs> really? It went 23 seasons? Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you were talking about a movie going. in 95, right? Actually, there have been a couple of movies, but the 95 one's the only one that I okay. ever saw. But I, I own that thing on VHS. Uh -huh. Me too. And I wore that sucker. I knew the lines. I quote that thing inside out and frontwards and backwards. And About, uh, I guess, 15, 20 years ago, my daughter went as the Pink Power Ranger for Halloween one year, and that's about that's the extent of my experience with the Power Rangers. You missed out, Johnny. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, I, t I, I tell you what, uh, that movie had one of the most interesting, like, new villains, you know, as far as, you know, like, Ivan. with, with Ivan Ooze. Yeah. See? Yeah. I thought he was absolutely hilarious. I found myself quoting him as a child more than I did any he of the Rangers. He was kind of a cool bad guy. He, yeah, he was he very really funny was. and uh, demeaning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the Power Rangers, like, yeah. When, he, when, yeah. He, when he's no. destroying the uh, <laughs> when he's destroying the command center, he's, like, he's labeling all the things. That he's just, the Black Plague. <laughs> the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> the Brady Bunch Reunion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I saw the Brady Bunch reunion. If that counts for That's anything. a line from the movie, John. I, One, I two, two that, years later, and I can still... It still <laughs> resonates. Yes. Bubby, was, what is it about the Power Rangers, man? I don't see you as a Power Rangers guy. I'm telling you, it, it totally caught me by surprise that Saturday when I, when I first seen that episode. And I was just hooked because, one, they were all fighting, which is really cool. You know, karate and whatnot. Yeah. But... The fact that they were strangers brought together mm -hmm. by this mysterious, you know what I'm saying, uh, force to do good. That was, man, it was so, you feel me, entertaining. I couldn't help myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so then the guy was dance fighting too. Like, come on, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you are the youngest of the brothers footmen. Yes, I am. All four of you are brothers. We are. Tell me a little bit about the band, man. Well, oh, the band. Uh, myself, Bubby, Dikembe, Mike, and G. 
We uh, doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We call our music summer music, S-U-M-M-A. Some of this, some of that. You can call it what you will. I won't uh, go ahead and classify it. I'll let you do that when you hear it. But uh, like you said, we just like to have a good time, and we just started coming together and honing in on uh, what we feel music is missing yeah. or what we want to do or have our say in. So, And the new single. Country Sky. Country Sky. Yeah, it's uh, people are receiving it very well. You know what I'm saying? It's talking about life and the struggles we have and, you know, just – um, still enjoying life through throughout everything that happens. You know I know I, I love the lyrics of that thing, and, <laughs> and, and it's just so flipping catchy, man. I, I I must have heard it three dozen times by now. <laughs> yeah, we you know what I'm saying? Like I call it, you know, summer music. We were incorporating a, a variety of different genres, so it catches a lot of people's attention. Now, Bubby, I, I, I just met you. You're an awesome dude, by the way. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic time. I haven't had a chance to check out your music yet, so what is it that you do in the Brothers Footman? I uh, produce, I sing, I write. Uh, you need me to go get you a sandwich, I get you a sandwich. You know <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of everything, we make it happen. <laughs> but I yeah. am a master toaster, <laughs> all right? I know the correct dial for every brand. I make a mean bowl of cereal. I just want to throw it out there. And he's got the jokes, too. That's what I heard. That's I, got, what I, heard. I got a few, you know. Rachel, <laughs> yes. lifelong Power Rangers fan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, since uh, the beginning. Among your many other interests, uh -huh. I mean... Where does this fit in, you know, with Doctor Who? How would you rate it? <laughs> and uh, which do you love well, better? Well, I'll say that Doctor Who has only been one of my fandoms for not even five years. Power Rangers going on twenty. Wow. So. so that's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Five Ish Fangirl Podcast. Mm -hmm. See, I got it right that time. Yeah. Took me a minute. Yep. Took me a minute. I had to think though. How did that start? <laughs> um, with Doctor Who, actually. <laughs> you can blame it really? on Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, I started watching Doctor Who because I uh, kept seeing friends post about it on Facebook. I was like, I got to see what they're talking about. Uh, so I started watching it and I just, I'd been listening to like Disney podcasts. So I was like, oh, I wonder if there's any Doctor Who podcasts. Um, and discovered this great podcast called Traveling the Vortex. Um, and became, was following them on their social medias uh -huh. and uh, kept hearing feedback sent in from these same names over and over again. I would send in feedback, and I'd see those people comment on their Facebook page. So we all friended each other, and uh, about the time of the 50th anniversary, we we uh, we all watched it and got so excited. It was like, oh my God, I wish I could talk to you guys about this. So we <laughs> we hopped on Google Hangout and proceeded to talk for four hours wow. <laughs> about the 50th anniversary special, and then we did That's it again at Christmas. About. That's dedication. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, so after a couple of very lengthy internet uh, hangouts, we're like, you know, we could just hit record and see what <laughs> happens. And bada bing, bada boom, we've been doing it for almost three years. Uh, and, this, and what do you discuss? I mean, did the topics change or yes. are you still with? Yeah. I, 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 my elevator pitches were like the Nerdist without the cursing and, w <laughs> and without Chris Hardwick's little black book of celebrity friends. Ah, it's amazing how he pulls people out of there and got nothing to do with the show he's talking about. No, I don't. I don't watch it anymore, yeah. I'll be very honest with you. <laughs> so the, sh the show that turned you on to podcasting to begin with, mm -hmm. is it still in operation? They're still putting out shows? Oh, yeah. Starts uh, Easter weekend. Okay. Starts back up. Very excited. So some people take a break with these things. It's yeah, I don't know how to do that. Like no. with Brother Brother, I, Beer. I only take a break if the show takes a break. Well, like with Brother Brother Beercast, I am in season one on the hundred and sixty-six episode, <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we are right yeah. now with that. Shane from Prosomnia. how's how'd, it going, how'd Johnny? You, how'd you get started as a Power Rangers fan, man? Oh, uh, you know, Johnny, I've been waiting for somebody to ask me that for a long time now. Um, I'm sorry it had to be you guys, but here we go. So it all actually started with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man. That's that was really Thank my you. my foyer. Thank you. My my I foyer. Shake this man's hand. My foyer into uh, into the, the the superhero realm. You know, I as a kid, you know, even though I lived in Indianapolis, I would pretend it was New York, and I'd go around with my aunt Pam and. You know, when whenever she would watch me, and we go and we'd knock on the sewers, you know, or whatever, you know, to see, you know, they're not home. They're probably out for pizza. You know, uh -huh. it, it was logical at the time. But that fed into Power Rangers. And I'll never forget the first time that and I saw the first episode air right when it aired. And when I saw that dumpster crack open and that hard riffing guitar, I was sold, man. I was absolutely. Right. 
I mean, who didn't love <laughs> that theme? It's mm-hmm. one of the most iconic themes from the 90s. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, and so I fell in love with it. It was moral ethic. Do you ever incorporate that into any of your songs? Uh, what, my love for Power Rangers? Yeah, because no, I the think themes, I'm awesome. No, just the whole line that you were just running from uh, the theme song. Oh, no, no. God, no. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going on with the band right now, brother? Uh, Presomnia is currently, uh, we're writing new songs, obviously. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a show coming up at the Melody Inn on uh, the 31st. Yes, the 31st. So next week, uh, we're playing with uh, Mimetics and uh, Moon from Chicago. From Chicago. Oh, very Sorry, cool. I, I burped. Did you say the Mimetics? Yes. Oh, right on. I know the drummer in that band. Oh, okay, right on. Excellent. Good and, dude. and that lovely voice you hear right there is Mitch Ross, general manager here at Hamilton 16 IMAX. Beautiful theater you have here. Thank you, sir. Very nice. Absolutely. Very nice. First time here. Brother, I've got to warn you. Rachel has seen the movie and loves it. Have you seen it yet? Not yet. Okay. Well, how did the uh, premiere go last night? Have you heard It numbers? went pretty well. I mean, people were people are super excited about it. It's, it's one of those movies like, like Transformers where it, it's just draws from people of a certain age group it's kind of it's kind of critic proof which is awesome because i think they just went out and made a movie that they thought everyone who's like you know about to turn 30 wanted to see (laughs) (laughs) yes and uh, i'm over 30 but yes he didn't look this way i noticed that yeah but i i mean so so (laughs) i even reading the reviews which you know i i feel like sometimes critics feel like they have to savage things yeah, well, but that's because everybody wants a controversy when there shouldn't be one. That's yeah, what, that's what's but even the critics were pretty easy on it, saying, you know, this is it doesn't. I think the overall feeling was they were really glad to see the lack of pretension. Like it, it, it is what it what it wants to be, and if you like that, you're gonna love it. And if you don't, you're not gonna go see it anyway. So why are you reading this? So oh, oh wow, it, it, it's way more to the point realistic. And I use that term very loosely because you're talking about teenagers that become superheroes that have giant robot machines made out a, look like dinosaurs. But it, it's way exactly. more realistic. Have than you the, seen the, a Brothers Footman show? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> the Kimbe flying around with his cape right. on there. About to say. <laughs> well, the lobby has emptied out. It was extremely loud in here a minute ago. So I'm assuming there's like a 715 show. It's uh, Beauty and the Beast. That is it. It, it runs a, early today. So. A holdover from last week yeah. is stri- still extremely popular. Biggest movie in the world right now. We have wow. Belle from Royal Wishes here in the lobby as well. She's been very popular over there. She looks absolutely stunning. I've seen stunning. guys taking pictures with this princess. I'm about yeah. to go get a picture with this princess. <laughs> I was debating it. I got to be honest. I, I took a picture before you guys got here. It's already <laughs> on Facebook. Too. I saw Johnny it. Beat us I saw Johnny's it. ahead of the game. Of <laughs> the well, game. I was here early, and she was just standing there. She's a perfect part. She looks gorgeous. I mean, she's actually prettier than uh, Belle, if you ask me. I'm waiting for Rachel to yell at me or something. Are you a Beauty and the Beast fan girl? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I still haven't well, seen it right yet. That's right at that age. That's kind of a blend I'm over right to, at that age. That's kind of a blend over to Harry Potter as well, when I said she was prettier than Belle, right? Well, yeah. Kind of, I guess. So okay. I don't think you can. I don't think you can compare <laughs> Belle to Hermione. <laughs> so. it's, a, it's the same person, though. Well, well, yes, in the is. later, really in the later movies, it's, yeah, yeah. she's changed a little bit, right? Yeah, but she's even grown up since then. So. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say. I think it would depend on like where at in the Harry Potter franchise you're talking about Hermione. Because, yeah, I'm not I mean, talking about the nine-year-old. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Well. well, eleven. I need to make sure everyone knows I'm not talking about the young girl. <laughs> 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 you want to clear that up? Absolutely. Mitch, you've not seen uh, Power Rangers yet. Has any of your staff? Oh, yeah. And uh, what is the consensus there? Have you heard? Well, it's, it's, it's exactly like what I said. The, the people who are, like, totally stoked to see it loved it. And the people who were indifferent are indifferent. Sure. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's moody teenagers doing karate and giant <laughs> robots and stuff. Like, it's... What else do you need? I, was about to say, I, I like mean, it already. That's what that's I'm saying. That's the whole reason I became a fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So, like, you know... It is what it is. I, I'm sure I will enjoy it several times once my daughter um, makes me watch it with her. And, you know, I, I've got to brush up on my Power Rangers lore because <laughs> my, my daughter Sky is going to ask me a thousand questions. Like, I'm going to have to know everybody's genealogy. I'm going to have to know which which Zords form which robot. And That's and what all. Google's <laughs> for. I mean, it's right there at your fingertips, brother. 
man, you don't know the kind of detail I got to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm as nerdy as they come. And it's I like, oh, it here it comes. Inches. <laughs> yeah, I how got this next thing. Is the Tyrannosaurus <laughs> if Rex? Somebody's, if a kid is asking how many cubits <laughs> the Tyrannosaurus Rex is, you might want to see what books they're Get them out. <laughs> From in front of the television, this put them in Mensa, just <laughs> go. They this is Mitch's the kids. They're highly intelligent. They have yes. to be. Just like Dad, right? Well, she's, I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding, though. She's going to ask me who these people's parents are, and I'm going to have to have an answer. <laughs> what happened to the Pink Ranger's mom? I don't know, sweetie. I think there was an accident. <laughs> Uh, I always wondered that about about Tommy when he came on the scene because that did come I mean, out of left field. yeah yeah absolutely left field like I feel I feel like like there's some underlying plot that was that was abandoned you oh, know yeah, what I mean yeah Tommy that, was only supposed to be temporary yeah yeah but everybody loved Life, him yeah loved him absolutely oh, yeah. I mean how could you not love JDF I know the only pose wasn't, you need yep. wasn't he the Green Ranger before the White Ranger oh, of course yes yeah so he's been four that? different colors <laughs> four. he's been. Green, white, red, and black. <laughs> yep. We Not, just call him. Well, no, <laughs> the chameleon wait, of the was Power it Rangers. Yeah. I, I thought it was gold. Wouldn't he the gold ranger? Isn't that uh, what it was? No. They, they, I think they made Jason oh, gold G at one point. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. David Yost. Wasn't he the original Gold Ranger no. or something like no, that? No, they I were am so uh, out of my that, 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 That's past yeah. my ceiling. Yeah. Well, so I stopped it's after, after space. I stopped watching, too, but I read yeah. up on some of the and some of the stuff that I missed and... And you yeah, guys saw Austin thing. St. John is going to be here in Indianapolis very soon at the yes. uh, Indiana Comic-Con. Comic -Con. Yeah. I didn't yeah. see that. That's going to be cool. I have not met Austin. I've met four. I met Karen Ashley, who was Aisha, mm -hmm. the second Yellow Ranger. I met David Yost. I met Steve Cardenas a couple of times. He's a really cool dude. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, no, I think that's it. Is that it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is being a former yeah. Power Ranger exhausting? Like, do people <laughs> run up on you and want to do karate? <laughs> like, like, do they pick, they pick fights probably with you? Probably Jason David At Frank, At the conventions yeah. I've been to, pro <laughs> with Jason, <laughs> he, probably. With JDF, probably. Amy Joe Johnson, probably not so much. Yeah. I doubt it's karate that people well, and, want. And, and apparently... <laughs> Apparently, I don't know if they do this at other, at other conventions, but uh, the last couple of years at the convention in Lexington, they've had um, the guys who play Bulk and Skull. And apparently they make it a mission. They give them like a little futon to put in their booth, and they they destroy it by the end of the convention <laughs> in very Bulk and Skull fashion. <laughs> Just flopping That's all over funny. the place. Oh, yes. <laughs> See, I've often wondered this. You know, what, I mean, if some of the Power Rangers actor or like The Rock. Dwayne Johnson, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin. They're standing in a bank and the bank gets robbed. What do they do? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you you won't doesn't want that to get out if you're laying on the floor cowering with everybody else. I imagine that The Rock would just be like the sweetest person of all time in that moment. Like he wouldn't try to like overcompensate and like try to get rid of anybody that's doing any harm. He's just I, I feel like he would dive over a group of children and just cover them. Because, <laughs> I mean, he's massive. He could cover, like, probably, like, eight. at least eight kids. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was thinking eight. yeah, come on, get under the rock. See, it works. <laughs> I was working on a, on a comedic bit once about how hard it is to be Stone Cold Steve Austin because anytime he stands on top of anything, someone throws him a beer. <laughs> so it was like him, him taking his kids to, like, the jungle gym. <laughs> You know, Daddy, every, I'm stuck. No, you're like, not. Yeah, that's right. He, all, he's always getting pelted with beer cans, <laughs> just randomly f like thrown from the bushes and stuff. Have you seen that show that he's got, um, Stone Cold? It, it's like a, it's like this like this marathon workout survivor show. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I like the seen it. Skull Ranch or something like Cracked Skull or something like that. It's the most intense thing I've ever seen in my life. Jeez. But you know, I always imagine that in order to be a Power Ranger, you would have to do something like that because there was no way that I was just going to wake up with abs. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> I kind of wished I did. I'd watch an episode of Power Rangers and then go out into the backyard, thoroughly convinced that now I knew karate and gymnastics and I could just oh, take yeah. off running I and mean, do yeah. backflips. If you watch and anything long <laughs> enough, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Oh, yeah, you start picking up stuff. You're like Chris Farley in uh, Black Sheep. Where'd you learn all those sweet moves? Uh Old Bruce Lee movies. Come on in. I got them all on Laserdisc. <laughs> you know. I was still stuck on just standing on top of things and getting beer thrown at you. I'd, that'd be a good problem to have for me. Sounds like Richard. I'm in the wrong line of work. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, didn't, doesn't he do a podcast, Stone Cold? Oh, I'm sure he probably does. I don't know if he was involved with any of those uh, reality shows where everybody's trying to become a wrestler. 
Uh, I guess I didn't know about the other show as well. Yeah, well, that's because it comes on at 3 o'clock in the morning on a channel that I cannot readily identify. And I haven't actually followed wrestling probably in the last decade. And so. apparently it's in, like, its fourth season. Like, I catch random episodes of it, and he's like, and this is our reigning champion. I was like, I thought this show came out, like, four months ago. <laughs> like, I caught it randomly. <laughs> wow. But we are not random here tonight. You can tell we've got a full panel of people in the know. Thank gosh, because I am lost. It is Movie Night with JL Media, <laughs> Hamilton 69 Max is where we're doing it live. It's the Power Rangers night, but I can't take my eyes off the princess over here. <laughs> She's got a lot of attention. This lobby was full a while ago, and she was taking pictures two and three at a time, it looked like. Now, I, Rachel. I think Johnny wants another picture. Rachel. Yes. <laughs> The dress she's wearing. <laughs> Who would you say that is? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is positively divine, and the yellow just brings out the reddish tint in a beautiful brunette hair. She's ac absolutely magnificent. It is a very nice <laughs> looking dress. Rachel, everything. do you have a Joan Rivers accent, or can no, you impersonate her I, at all? No. Because that would have been perfect. No. <laughs> I, I don't what? do accents very well. <laughs> but you are the one person here on the panel that I know of that has seen the Power Rangers. Yes. And uh, <laughs> was there any disappointing moments? Mm, mm, no, maybe. not really. Uh -huh. No, I, I thought it. I thought uh, it, it paid very good respect to the the source material, right. the, the TV show. There's even a few nods to the uh, the 1995 movie. Good. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep. Excellent. So, yeah. I was going to ask, did they shut out the old cast in this one? I cannot confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> plead the fifth. <laughs> yes, I plead the fifth. <laughs> so, what did you think of what did you think of uh, Rita Repulsa? Scary as heck. Very, yeah. very scary. Elizabeth. Ba the only things I've ever seen Elizabeth Banks in is the Pitch Perfect movies and the Hunger Games, and this is completely different than those characters that she played in those movies. So she is scary. This is not the screeching Rita from the TV show where she just runs around and t calls her little minions idiots and <laughs> exclaims she has such a headache. No, this, this version of Rita is angry and she is out for revenge. As a super fangirl of pretty much everything, Yes. what's your favorite movie of the year thus far? This year so far? Ugh. It changes every week. Because <laughs> there's so much good stuff that keeps coming out. And it's only going to get better this summer. I know. I mean, at, at this point, if my husband happens to be listening, I'm sorry, honey, but probably the Power Rangers at the okay. moment. I probably would have said Logan before. Yeah, Logan was going to be my pick. Yeah. That was pretty dope. Did you like the ending of Logan, Shane? I no. loved it. Oh, you didn't like it, Bobby? No. No? I don't want to die. Wait, that's the only course <laughs> replication that it could, Man. That could happen. He's Logan. He's never supposed to die. He's always supposed to heal himself. Right, I but I mean, he happened. gets old. You know what I mean? Like, the healing factor runs out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was <laughs> a sad ending. They changed the source <laughs> material a little bit, but I mean, you have to for films. I thought it was a great movie. Mm, I too. absolutely love it. I, the action was off the chain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I love the fact that they always have it pop. Uh, they, they, uh, they put it in a completely different universe than the rest of the continuity. You know what I mean? It's still it, it, it's still there in the continuity or whatever. You exist in that, uh, just in case nobody's seen it yet, because it's not out on Blu-ray or anything. You <laughs> you're you're in that you're in that post you know dystopian type future. You know what I mean? And and you're left to deal with all of that, but it it, it can remain separate of what else is going on. I heard they're doing um, I heard that they're doing uh, an X Force movie too, so that'll be pretty nice. Mm. Yeah, that's that's actually happening. Uh, Deadpool's team, Deadpool uh -huh. and Cable. And that all was those my guys. favorite part of Logan was the Deadpool teaser. <laughs> Absolutely I love me irreverent. some Deadpool. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. I uh, was in uh, yeah, I was in Noblesville last week, and I saw a pickup truck had a full Deadpool on his tailgate, just laying there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Not sure why this is happening. But it's Deadpool. Was it in his <laughs> Burt Reynolds pose? It was in the Burt Reynolds pose. Nice. It absolutely was. Yeah, nice. <laughs> laying down, looking at you like, "What's up?" Mm -hmm. Movie night with JL Media, Hamilton 16 IMAX is where we're doing it live. Mitch, what's going on up here, brother? Oh, uh, you know, just slinging the popcorn, <laughs> punching the tickets. Uh, we got a lot going on. You know, obviously we're we're revving up for summer here. Um, the exciting thing I just got to do was help open our beautiful uh, Riverview 14 in GDX in Gibsonton, Florida. 
oh, just sweet. outside Tampa. It's uh, the prettiest building we've ever we've ever built, and uh, I'm I'm usually pretty partial to this one, but uh, it's a it's a gorgeous facility. So if we got any snowbirds up here, make sure you're, if you're in Tampa, you go and check our new building out. It's really amazing. We got a great flashback series coming up. We've got Labyrinth coming up. Mm. Um, we, Sundays and Wednesdays. Yep, right. two, 2 and 7 p.m. Um, so we've, we've got a lot of good content on the horizon. Uh, definitely go to GoodrichQualityTheaters.com and check out what we've got coming up. We're in the middle of our kids' show season. Um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 10 a.m. If you are a frequent moviegoer goer card holder, uh, tickets are free for up to six admissions. And they're a dollar for everyone else. Bam. That's just beautiful. Um, I just put tickets on sale today for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which <laughs> we're super excited about. And we're doing a 3D double feature of Guardians 1 and Guardians 2. Tickets went on sale for that today. They are $20. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm and, and there's some Yeah, sign me up. There's some free swag that comes with that, and that's going to be a blast. I, yes, please. I get to, I've had the pleasure of running a couple of events here. Um, for the Marvel fans and the Star Wars fans where we do uh, some marathons and stuff and that's always a really fun crowd um, if anybody's got the stamina to watch two movies in a row I highly recommend it it's a great audience and you're going to have a lot of fun I think all those movie fans would be alright with that mm -hmm. oh yeah. yeah absolutely we got to yeah. get that information for you so we can get it on the website Okay. We got to get it up and out. I didn't know you were having a special. Yeah, we I'm just loving that. We just uh, well, you know, as with some of the things that happened with Disney, this one was hush hush. And mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, the info just dropped today. I just put tickets on sale this morning, so we're ready to rock and roll with that. Guardians is going to be a huge movie. I'm Absolutely. gonna have to show up like three days early just mm -hmm. to get a spot over here to set up. On. Yeah, you know, I I mean, I think the Guardians has that secret sauce of fun, humor. <laughs> And adventure, yep. you know, and people and really want that, it's and it's threat. not something that Hollywood always does really well anymore. So, I think it's going to be a big hit. I hope, I hope they stay stick to their roots and don't take themselves too seriously. Yeah, Bubby, what's great about this theater? They have the flashback series. What is that? That's exactly. what we were talking about Sundays and Wednesdays at two and seven. I actually got to see the original Halloween here back in uh, October. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I remember seeing it in theaters when I was a kid. So to see it again. It was huge. That's cool. That's it, cool. It was absolutely huge. You start picking, you know, as a movie fan, and you're a lot older. Now, well, I'm a lot older. You're not a lot older. But you notice stuff that you didn't notice before. Right, when you watch a movie. Yeah. Again, right, when you're older. All right, and it, it was just amazing. Took me back to my childhood. And I used to be scared of the Goonies. And then I watched <laughs> it when I was older, and I was like, okay, I get what, it. Now. What scares you about the Goonies? Are you kidding are me? You, are you like, are you, did you really just ask <laughs> really? me that? <laughs> it was well, scary. You, did you not see that dude? Uh, again, I'm older than you guys are, so. <laughs> you, you, you oh, oh, God, yes. Are you, yes. No, no, just was, no. No, 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 no. It was freaky deaky, it man. Was terrible. Like, you watch that movie and you think, the first thing you think about that movie, the good news, you think chunk. You know what I mean? You want to no, see the I truffle shuffle. I think Cindy Lomper. A truffle shuffle. Well, that's not scary. Well, that's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. no. That, that, that's distracting. It's funny. But then. Right. No, it just. <laughs> it was freaky yeah. looking. <laughs> Rachel, did the, the Goonies scare you, Rachel? Actually, I've never seen it. Whoa, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Boo, I know. Boo, hiss. <laughs> I know. And, Sha and Sean Astin is going to be in town <laughs> soon well, here, too. Well, don't tell him you didn't see it. I know. Uh, it's great. It's great. It holds up. I will say this. for As opposed to a lot of the movies that I liked as a kid, Goonies is still like a pretty quality film. Yeah. It's got treasure. It's got monsters. It's got adventure. It's got your best buds. What else do you need? Right. That's right. You know what didn't exactly. hold up for me? The Blues Brothers. I didn't realize how campy it was until I started watching it again a few years ago. I still watch it. I love the music, you know, and I know every word in the movie, but it wasn't as cool as it was. It, it's like a really poorly edited, you know, uh, collection of comedy sketches. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not really sure how you – it's like a dream sequence. You're not really sure how you got from one place to another, but, hey, you're there, <laughs> so, you know, it's happening. Yeah, yeah it's funny you should say that because the last time I watched it, I was like – we're getting chased around by Nazis now. <laughs> <laughs> Illinois Nazis. Right. And I've never seen that movie, so I have Why no not? idea All right. what's going on. But I don't feel bad because I haven't seen Doctor Who now. I'm sorry, Rachel. I, I'm with you on that, It's okay. <laughs> I tell you what, I, everybody screams 10. I'm, I'm just going to say my quick piece about Doctor Who. And I love me some David Tennant. Don't misunderstand me. He had mm -hmm. one of the best finales of all time. Everybody knows it. It's it's done deal. However, Chris Eccleston is highly underrated oh, as a doctor. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I, I still, to this day, if David Tennant weren't an option for that absolutely just tear-jerkingly, aw- just awfully awesome finale of his, I don't want to go. We <laughs> didn't want you to go either, man. We didn't want you to go the first time you stayed, and then, boom, you're gone. But Chris, but, but uh, Christopher Eccleston, I tell you what, he did a fantastic job mm-hmm. playing uh, a post-war, you know, Post-war, just pissed off, Doctor. Okay, uh, I have no idea who any of those people are, but I'm going to go ahead and... I nerded like, out with her for a second. My All right. apologies. All right, moving out with J.O. Media, Hamilton 16 IMAX. We're sitting with Bubby from the Brothers Footman. What's happening? Shane from Prosomnia. Hello. And Rachel from Fivish Fangirls Podcast. Hello. See how I got it right now? It took Yay. me a few minutes to get it dialed in. I couldn't even talk for oh, three It took you 30 minutes. minutes to get it right. Three for <laughs> three, though, Johnny. We're proud. <laughs> there we are. And Mr. Mitch Ross, the general manager of Hamilton 16 IMAX. Howdy hi. Brother, you've got a lot going on as well. Are we able to talk about in, any of your other endeavors? Sure. You uh, wrote a screenplay. I did. Can we talk about that I for did. a minute? I did. I just um, I wrote a screenplay. I submitted it to a big contest um, through a website called ScreenCraft, which is kind of the trade website for screenwriters and stuff. And uh, the contest we made the quarterfinals in. Uh, we just found out today that we did not make the semis. But for my first attempt um, at writing anything, and um, you know, I was I'm pretty happy with the result. So that was pretty exciting. And We've actually uh, done a rewrite based on the feedback we got. They have one of the deals you can do is you can pay to get professional feedback from a from a writer and a script reader and stuff. And um, we took that and we um, did a rewrite, and it's even better. And I think it's actually going to be a product I get to sh- show someday. Oh, I'm, pr- I'm pretty nice. confident. Very nice. So I, I'm I'm super excited about that. I'm working on my next project. Um, it's something you're going to like, Johnny. It's uh, real scary. Really. Yeah, it's I'm, messed up. You know, <laughs> people are gonna read this stuff and be like, "Why is Mitch write this stuff? He's so nice." <laughs> but uh, yeah, it'll be. Now you know why. That's right. So I'm entering into a science fiction writing contest uh, this week, and then sometime between now and July, I'll be entering into a horror contest with a couple of different pieces, um, and we'll see how we'll see how it goes. Very nice. What's up with the Facebook Live videos? I hadn't seen one in a minute. I haven't, you know, man. He, he uh, would all start them off the same. Hello, humans. Yeah. I haven't seen one in a while, brother. I haven't done one in a while. I've been off Facebook for a while just because uh, the election and, and all the stuff around it sure. just took a lot of the fun out of social media for me. And um, it seemed like a lot of people were spending a lot of time worrying about being these avatars of people they were instead of being sure. nice to each other. And I didn't really understand it. I love the unfollow button on <laughs> Facebook. So yeah. That's, yeah, that's sometimes you have to purge. <laughs> Absolutely, which yeah. is a great movie. Bum, bum, ba-dum, <laughs> bum, ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. I don't need people to agree with me, and I don't need to agree with them. But I, there's there's no bone in my body that makes me need that that makes me want to make you feel like I feel. And I, I don't understand people who have that in them. So I backed off of Facebook for a while. But you know, all the, everything used to bother me, Mitch. Every, that's why my hair is the color it is. I don't, I, this, this is me at 28. I'm only 28, and I look like this. Wait a minute. Your hair has some color? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Wait here in the back. See this one right here? Right here in the back. <laughs> but I, I, I've learned something. I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm to the point now I just do not care what most people think anymore. Just a handful of people, I care about what they think. Uh, other than that, I'm just doing me. So, yes, unfollow on Facebook, Bubby, is a great tool. It is. Saying. It is. I'm just saying. You, you don't get into a whole lot of uh, in-depth political conversations on your podcast, do you, Rachel? No, this, not at all. This is about as deep as we get on any of ours. So I'm, trying, I'm trying to move on. <laughs> yeah. What is your general topic of conversation over there? Uh, it's anything and everything that trips our trigger as far as nerdy and geeky stuff. So. Five-ish fangirls, so yep. it's always ladies. Yeah. No guys at all. Well, not normally, but okay. occasionally we have guests, and they sometimes are of the, the male variety. Okay. I mean, <laughs> variety? And they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the spice of life, right? Yep. <laughs> what am I, like Chex Mix? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. We're like ferns. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Just put us in the corner, you know. Water you, give you a little bit of light every now and then. Yeah, look at us occasionally. Actually, you know, we're good. Sound actually, that's a scarily accurate correlation there. Put me in the corner, give me food and water, and... <laughs> and just Pay meet everybody me as they walk in the door right. just a little me. sunlight and like a cat when I get up on something high just throw me a beer <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be alright right? <laughs> what are you doing so, have we already covered why it's five-ish 
Yes. Okay. I'm I'm sorry, but we can explain it one more time. She had, I'm sorry, go ahead and let you, <laughs> you do it. You want the Cliff Note version? <laughs> yeah, the Reader's Digest the version. The Reader's Digest version. Uh, one, it's an homage to, to Doctor Who and specifically P, uh, Peter Davison's Five-ish Doctors reboot. Okay. Docu, whatever you want to call that thing he did during the 50th anniversary. Because um, Doctor Who's the, the fandom that brought us all together. And also the fact that there's normally five of us, but sometimes there's less, and therefore ish. Okay, cool. And just in case any of the uh, younger listeners are wondering, Reader's Digest is a, uh, <laughs> is a it's a mag- a little tiny magazine, about the size of your mom's soap opera magazine. And that it's they used still, to put out it's back still in, the day. in circulation. Yeah, of course so it is. So it's a soap opera nobody, digest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and what's interesting magazine. is... Right there at the checkout at Kroger. <laughs> what's interesting is I've never paid for a Reader's Digest, and somehow I've been getting it for the last four years. <laughs> I've never paid for one issue. I have no idea how there I got Entertainment Weekly, well, you know, however often that comes out, I can't really discern when that is but <laughs> whenever it comes i'm assuming I, it would like, be I'm, weekly i don't know you know you may be right johnny <laughs> there may be there, your logic tracks truth and advertising yeah just but i have no idea name. where it comes from yeah i think sometimes the magazines are just like well you know that person didn't you know get a subscription so we're gonna send them something anyway and then you know mm-hmm. we'll get them hooked and then <laughs> we'll just We'll I've been getting they, Seventeen magazine for like years, and I don't subscribe to it, in. and I'm pretty sure I'm out of their demographic. <laughs> they really do try to reel you in, though. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's all it's all a plot. It's like it, it, it's like a it's like a pusher. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, come over here, try this. You know, you know I'll see you in a year, and then I'm not going to give you any more. But then you're going to pay me for it. <laughs> Bubby, with your grueling recording and touring lifestyle, do you ever get to go out to do movies? Uh. I say I probably go to a movie once every three or four months. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's kind of sad. It is because I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I try to stay busy though, doing uh, music and new things and trying always experimenting with uh, new sounds and stuff. I love doing that, man. Yeah. So the time just rolls by. Is yeah. there anything coming up this year that you just have to see in the theater? Because you know it's different. You know, some things you want to wait till video. Did I see any previews for anything last time? I'm going to tell you right now, the more and more I see the trailer for Kong, the more my mouth starts watering. I'm not sure I why see, I phrase it that way. This is what either. happened. This is what happened, and it's not my fault. I haven't been to the movies in a while, but my mom was in town two weeks ago. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, mom, I'm going to take you to go see Get Out, because, you know, everybody was talking about it. I'm going to take you to go see it. And I said, it starts at 5. I'm going to be at the house to pick you up 20 minutes early, because I want to see the previews of what's coming out. I haven't been to the movies in a while. And she... Makes me late. So, <laughs> isn't that the way it goes, though? <laughs> now we know where Sauce gets it from. So, I mean, right. Do you feel me? So, I missed, I missed the previews. I didn't get to see what was coming out. That's the way my sister is. She's like, oh, there's going to be 20 minutes of previews. There's no need to hurry. I'm, no, if you're going to the theater, you got to be there with the lights still on. Right. I, I, I want right. to see all the commercials. That's, I that's see all the, the reason trailers. why I spent money. That's like the you appetizer. I mean? that's, yeah. part, that's part of the experience. <laughs> you know, it's one, it's one thing to watch, you know, trailers on, like, you know, the Internet or, you know, anything like that. But it's a whole other thing when it's, like, booming in your face. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It just, yeah. you know, and then you feel that initial, like, giddiness. Like, you can't feel the giddiness when you're like, Oh, yeah, like we were talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. You're like, oh, yeah, I heard that's coming out. And then you go and you look it up, but it doesn't hit you. But mm. when you're in the theater, when you're in there, and it just kind of boom, boom, See in the movie, boom, boom, seeing the trailer the like darkness. the movie is supposed yeah. to be seen. Right. Be yeah. You got to see the trailer. It's like, like I said, the appetizer. You just can't have the soup of the day. Bubby, yeah, what exactly. did you think of Get Out? Man, that movie was pretty. I'm, I was looking for it actually to be more scary. I was everyone, too. I was looking know? for something else. I'm yeah, not was, sure what. I, I, I was looking for a little bit. But more. I got to be honest with you. When we left the theater, then I was scared of white people. I ain't lying. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was something. <laughs> I'm just Mitch. I'm just saying. Movie night with we JL should, Media. That's just we common sense. Together, John. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Hamilton 16 IMAX is where we're doing it live. It's movie night with JL Media. Mr. Mitch Ross is having to step back from the microphone. I think he saw that movie as well. Shane, have you seen it what yet? Are you, what are your thoughts I on it? I have not. Okay. I really, really want to, but I'm not going to lie to you, Johnny. I'm a, I'm as Jewish as I come, man. I, I, I pinch pennies. <laughs> you know what I mean? I Every dollar I got, I throw into the gas tank because I can't stop driving. So keep moving. I've you got to keep moving. I've Just seen keep the, swimming. I've seen the Just instrument you guys swimming. play Just on. I've seen the band setup. You're spending a little money somewhere, man. Well, um, 
I, I'm, I'm a vocalist, Johnny. I don't do anything, man. I was talking like, about I, the whole I, I band. A, I'm trying throne. to give you props here, man. This is a trailer for your <laughs> stage show. That's what of we're course, doing right of course, of course. No, uh, we've uh, we've been working tirelessly on uh, on really kind of creating a more theatrical sound this go around. You know, I don't want to say too much yeah. because you know we've got some. You know, some secret thing. You know, Bubba, you understand what I'm talking about. I when you got a new it. idea that you're rolling with, you don't exactly just want to throw right, the Skittles right, out there. You wait for that rainbow. <laughs> all right? And then smack them with it. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I, here's your pot of gold. <laughs> rainbow go. Smacks should definitely be a band name. <laughs> it's going to be the name so of the next cool. EP. That sounds so cool. I can see the album cover now. <laughs> yeah. Rainbow, rainbow Smacks. smacks. <laughs> Get <that hand> with <laughs> buy, the, buy the domain name right now. Get us scared. <laughs> we'll split it. 50 50. There we go. Everybody's there we go. Out there Googling right now <laughs> no, but uh, but you know, uh, we're all we're all extremely happy with the direction that we're going. Um, it, it's going to be a little bit different than it was the last time around. Just uh, trying to expand on a little bit more of an etherealness, you know. Right. Uh, really, really dive into the inception of a moment. Uh, the the exact the exact peak climax of a feeling. Sure. And, uh, and I, I, again, you know, I was talking with Bubby earlier, you know, the, being a musician, you know, you start talking about your own music and everybody's like, oh, God, please stop. <laughs> God, you're so in love with you. You, you know right, what? You're darn right. 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 I'm right. in love with myself. <laughs> I love our music. I love what it does to me, mm -hmm. you know. And, and a lot of people say, well, you know, it, it's darker. It's darker this. It's darker that. And I think that there is a particular realm in music that has been forgotten and that is the the dark realm of music you know as everybody says well you know i want to feel good you know i want to feel uppity but you can't feel uppity all the time if you're in a down mood you know listening to 24 karat magic you know might sound like a good idea but it's not always going to work sure you know right. what i mean so sometimes you got to feed into the moment exactly you have to feed into the moment and thus you begin to seethe you know what i mean and i think that you know back you know 10 15 years ago um you know, when everybody was again in the uh, in the darker realm of things, uh, it gave people a place to 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 let go of that tension, of that of that fear, of that uh, anger, that animosity, mm. and and it allowed people to just like it, almost like sucking the poison out of a wound. Mm. You know, good analogy. And uh, and that and that's what I think that we try to do. We try to give it to you uh, just as hard and just as soft as any mood that you're ever going to have. You know, still the hardest and the softest. We just want to. We just want to make music that, that's going to move you. I don't. I don't want you to feel good at a show. I want you to feel relieved, and we all mm. do. And this has been a presomnia moment. Right, that's therapy <laughs> right there. Also, also, <laughs> at the Mel next week, we are going to be playing our new song Albatross, which you can find the video for on YouTube, Facebook. You can get on Spotify, iTunes, blah blah, Xbox Music, stuff like that. I can't name them all. We, there's like a little. We got one of those little photos that has everything that, that, you know, your music is on, and it's like 20 different little icons. Now, I can't even keep up with half of the icons That's anymore. That's pretty cool, though. You're, yeah. you're on pretty much every That's cool. website, aren't you? You're yeah. Not Grinder though, right? You're not on... No. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, Mitch. So... <laughs> Sorry, Mitch. He's over there like, what? <laughs> well, Mitch is the boss. Fine. <laughs> I Fine. Sure right. It's my cross to bear. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry I brought it up, not I'm sorry Shane's not on there. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. When you talk when you talk about art, uh, particularly art that has a, a manufacturing element to it, there's a lot of pressure from people for the sameness. You know, it, and it's not always uh, the element of going darker. Or it sounds like, you know, like you're trying to create new spaces in your music, too. And sometimes people reject that stuff because they have such 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 strong ownership of you, but I think if you're dishonest, you lose that ownership too. And you exactly. can tell in the music. You know, you can tell. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if if Slayer came out with an album tomorrow about rainbow smacks and unicorns, <laughs> you know, whether it was light and airy and fun and fluffy and you know musically wonderful, they would have pushback from their fan base. Oh yeah. And I think as an artist, you got to do, you got to you know kind of go down whatever rabbit hole is in front of you when, when you're feeling it, you know? Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's really the, the majesty and the tragedy of doing music, you know what I mean? It's every, every single time somebody picks up uh, any type of art, it's always a passion project. I don't care what anybody tells you because mm -hmm. nobody's going to make it for you, you know what I mean? And you really do have to pull those ideas, you know, literally out of thin air, you know? And like you said, you know, the only way that you can do that and do it properly is just to be honest. And yeah. if you don't feel a certain way anymore, then don't try to be a feeling that you're not. I, I take a uh, 
bit of advice from Michael Jackson when it comes to writing. He always he, he said uh, writing should be like a when you get in a river, flow with it. You feel me? Don't go exactly. don't go against it and try to make it something. Like let it be what it is. Have you ever have you ever gotten halfway through writing the lyrics to a song? And and for some odd reason you stop like you know the, someone knocks at the door you get a phone call or there's a cat in a tree and you're <laughs> the only guy around, um, <laughs> but then you try to come back to it and it's gone. It's just yeah. gone. You, See, you might as well just wad that piece of paper up, throw it away. I'm, I'm glad you said that because a lot of people what a lot of people don't understand is music is a feeling. Like sometimes everything can be right and something's not right with you and you're like I don't feel it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Not you're at like, all. And everybody's like, "What's wrong? I don't get it." Like, dude, I'm not feeling it. Okay. <laughs> I got. What, what are you talking about? You're disappointed. I got two verses, three choruses, a bridge, and then I got all the way up to the ending, and then I decided that I didn't feel that way anymore. You want to talk about wasted time? Yeah. You know what I mean? You guys are sitting over there talking. I'm still thinking about the cat in the tree. Why don't somebody just throw it a beer? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Out of the tree. It is movie night with JL Media. <laughs> <laughs> Hamilton 69 wow. Max is where we do this twice it's a month. Coast cat. We're going to be here all year. Miss <laughs> Rachel, you've seen the movie. Yes. Are there any surprises, anything that jumped out at you? And uh, Can our fans and uh, go watch this movie? Oh, yeah. Whether, be- whether you're a fan or not, I mean, you're going to have a good time. But if you're familiar with the, you know, the, the TV show. But does it stand on its own? Can I go? Not oh, yeah. Not Power Rangers yeah. fan and still enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Is there anything you need to war- uh, warn me about? Because you know I'm more of a, a G-rated guy. I don't want to go in there and. No, <laughs> I mean it, it's rated PG-13. Really? Um, so for all the right reasons. Yeah, that's pre- right. Pretty much. I mean, it's 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 as far as the action, it's you know it's going to be on the same level as something like the the Avengers. Uh-huh. As far as the amount of destruction of property and everything. <laughs> Poor Angel Grove. I don't know how they rebuild after every uh, battle of the Power Rangers. Because have. Angel Grove has the best economic plan of any fictional city of all time. <laughs> well, they may have on the TV show, but this uh, this version of Angel Grove, not so much. Well, yeah, but, well, <laughs> what I'm looking forward to, and I've seen it in some of the trailers, and um, and I wasn't exactly sure about it at first, mm-hmm. but what they're doing with, the, uh, with Goldar. Yes. You know what I mean? And I've got to think to myself, because, you know, no no spoilers here, but, you know, my Power Rangers are going to pull a win out. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. They're going to pull a W. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? As, gonna if, be close. as if we had to ask. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's not like Brian Kranz is going to pop out the tube and go, well, I guess I have to get something done now. <laughs> and then dons the hat and becomes Heisenberg. <laughs> <laughs> you know, come here, Rita. Take some of this blue sky there. with you. Yeah. No, but... Um, <laughs> I uh, I can't even remember where I was going with that. I'm just lost on Brian Cranston's forehead now. I was, I was, I was trying to count now. all the references that you threw in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like rapid Gatling gunfire. No, um, but but I I, I got to assume that they're going to pull the W out. Don't you think that their economy is going to flourish with all that gold? Because if they destroy gold, or if they you know, and I mean, I'd melt them down. You know what I mean? I don't know if it actually works that way I want in streets this particular of gold, version, okay? but. Uh, I was promised a brand new life in Angel Grove, and I <laughs> intend on living it. <laughs> I want to go to Ernie's Juice Bar. I want to get myself a smoothie. I want to have a nice day and possibly get attacked by some putties on the way. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like yeah, a great it's, one. it's not. Quite that like sounded kind of cool. I'm not even sure what a putty is, but I the, mean, the, the putties in like this the, are not the, the putties. Not my the childhood. putties of old. No. Yeah. Are they scary? Are, are, are they scary day. putties? <laughs> 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 are they terrible putties? No, they're just silly. <laughs> <laughs> they're just silly putties. So is this movie at all as scary as The Goonies is what I'm trying to figure out? Well, I have never I seen The not. Goonies, so That's I don't have a, a frame of reference. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, mean, I was never scared. We'll have to get Bubby a blanket over here <laughs> <laughs> just cover up. Everybody's it, got that movie, it, man. The Wicked Witch of the East scared the crap out of me uh, when I was a kid, dude. Sexy. Yeah, she was a she was a looker. She was, a <laughs> she looker. was absolutely just Fate, magnificent. Fatal Attraction looking. scared the heck out of me. I was grown and married, and Fatal Attraction scared the hell out of me. That, that is not a children's movie. You know that what? You know not. what? They know. boil a bunny. <laughs> I'm trying to. T- that's what? the only children's movie. I haven't scared. seen that. You know, there were boiling children on bunny. the frontier not 200 <laughs> years ago boiling bunnies, and they turned out just fine. Okay. Lived to the ripe old age of 28 or 29. Oh, that's well. right. It's that bunny stew. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it is movie night with JL happen. Media. We are live from Hamilton 16 <laughs> IMAX talking about the Power Rangers as well as several other things. Rachel, where can we find your show online, dear? Uh, we are on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher, and on YouTube. Is there a website for the Five-ish Fangirl podcast? Yes, it's the 5 com. 
Boom. All right. Boom. How often do you release shows? Weekly. A certain day? Uh, if we it depends on whether we record on time. Ah. Uh, it used to be we recorded on Sundays and show be released on Monday. Now we're recording on Mondays more often than not. So the show normally goes out either really late Monday night or sometime on Tuesday. Did you play with different days to see which was the best uh, mm. time frame to release on? No, it's just as people's jobs and changed okay. and all that. It kind of shifted everything. So. You don't you don't bank any shows up, so you record and release? No. Like catch and release? Well, <laughs> we un- unintentionally banked because for the first six months, we were not on iTunes. We were strictly on YouTube. Uh-huh. Um, so once we got on iTunes um, and we release on iTunes and then realize, hey, you know, we got time here in the schedule. We could release something that wasn't on iTunes the first go round. Sure. Or if we end up having to miss a week because if I'm on vacation, because that's the only reason the show doesn't happen. <laughs> with, with Brother Brother Beercast, of course, with Movie Night, we record and release each time we come up here. You know, it's just twice a month. Brother Brother Beercast, there were so many working parts and so many people involved, it just seemed to make more sense to bank up as many as possible. I'll take a whole week and record like six or seven episodes in one day, and for that whole week I'll do that. Well, we we do Which a we do a news helps. segment, so okay, yeah, that, you couldn't that, have, that, if yeah. you're doing a current events type yeah. thing. But I right now I can proudly say we have 15 episodes in the can. Uh, which leads me to a problem with Prosomnia that I recorded, <laughs> uh, what, three, three weeks ago and still not yeah, released something yet? something like that. About so I get, I get emails, back. dude, when's our show dropping? When's our show dropping? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good show, my goodness. We had such a good time. You're such a wonderful host, too, Johnny. Well, thank yeah. you, brother. Yeah, yeah. I think the PBR we, had something to do with that. Yeah, so Johnny says the move. We got destroyed <laughs> during that hot <laughs> but we had so much fun doing it, man. We really, really did. And what about you? Where can we find Presomnia, Shane? You can find us online at facebook.com slash presomnia or youtube.com slash presomnia. I think that's okay. really all I had the breath for. No, uh, That just, seemed uh, like another presomnia, presomnia moment. P-R-E-S-O-M-N-I-A. You would not believe how many times that got uh, misspelled, mispronounced in the, uh, in the earlier years of you know, when we first started coming around. I, and actually, every band I've ever been in has been mispronounced. Absolutely. <laughs> what were the Just origins of Prosomnia? How'd you come up with the name? Well, um, it, there was a there was a cat that I used to do music with. I still do uh, sometimes by the name of Legacy. Uh, really awesome, uh, awesome, awesome guy. One of the best uh, one of the best uh, recording artists uh, the city has to offer. And I was over at his house. Uh, we were we were kind of you know fluctuating some ideas back and forth. And I came across this acoustic track. And he was like, yeah, you know, my, my dude P, you know, he laid that down. He's talking about Patrick, our, uh, our rhythm guitarist. And, uh, and I was like, man, that sounds really great. Do you think he'd mind if I sang over it? You know, it's just like a little minute and a half piece, you know, or whatever. It had, you know, some subtle violins in the background and some, you know, rainstorm. Just real, you know, just feels, you know, yeah. kind of song. And so, you know, I sang over it. And uh, apparently, you know, he liked it. And, uh, and uh, you know, he came and met me at work, and, you know, we developed a friendship out of that. And, you know, it had been, you know, like two ships in a night anyway, like half the people I know, you know, between Ben Davis and Plainfield. There's just so many people out there on the west side that, that you know, you may have been around for years but never actually met. But, you know, we started discussing, you know, uh, if we did a music project together, what... Um, you know, what kind of music, uh, you know, influenced us, you know, Perfect Circle, 10 years, things of that nature, you know, the a little bit more uh, emotionally charged, you know, uh, hard rock and stuff like that. Uh, you you team in uh, Justin Downey with that, one of the most fantastic lead guitarists I've ever met in my life. He and Patrick just play together so well, man. It's like hand in glove. And, you know, I'm super fortunate to be a part of that writing team. That this is was, uh, very cool. Yeah, and uh, we ended up uh, gathering all the members up together. The original lineup uh, featured uh, Stephen Smith on bass and uh, Nate Hammonds on drums. Uh, of course, now with our new lineup, we have the amazing Daniel Menerick uh, on bass and Ryan Cox on drums and Ryan Hickey <laughs> on auxiliary with um, you giggled. I know why you giggled. Every time you say his name, I'm going to giggle till you know, it's we just We love funny. you, Ryan. And that's all anybody <laughs> needs to say. Um, <laughs> we got stories. <laughs> we got stories, but not for this podcast. <laughs> no, um, 
uh, yeah, and uh, Ryan Hickey, uh, like I said, uh, does our uh, auxiliary uh, drums and all of our sounds and effects and things of that nature. You know, we're we're having a really good time. You know, exploring new avenues with the uh, with the genre that we fell in love with. Uh, After Lucid Aggression was released in 2011, which you can find that whole album on Spotify and all those other music places. Um, you know, it really kind of uh, set a, a precipice for what it was that we were trying to accomplish. And I think, I think people thought that that was the essence of what Presomnia was, but I don't think we exactly knew what it was at the time. And I don't think we do now, if you ever it's know <laughs> what it is that you are while you're in the process of evolving <laughs> it. But I, I, think it was a, I think it was an excellent, you know, uh, work in the right direction of where we're going. It's uh, one of my new favorite bands, and I'm not sure what's going on over there. <laughs> I'm just saying. And, I, and Ryan, we will not tell the stories on the air, but I can't promise that off the air we're not telling everybody. Everyone. <laughs> Bubby with the Brothers Footman. Yeah. Very simple story. Four brothers, man. Yep. So it's, it's Gerald family. and Mike and Joshua and Dikembe. Yes, sir. <laughs> There's a story behind that, too, but you got to listen to the Brother Brother Beercast episode to find out about that. Where can we find you online, my friend? Oh, all social media is at the Brothers Footman, and coming very soon is IamFootman.com, which will have all information, videos, merchandise. You feel me? Yeah. What? what? So, uh, can I get a T-shirt? Yeah, every, yeah, we got some really, really cool designs and yeah, some stuff. We had a meeting a couple weeks ago with this guy. It's going to be very cool in a couple, uh, say, like a month and a half maybe when everything's up and running. Yeah. It's going to be very nice, very so cool. So you're, you're producing all your own stuff over there? Yes, sir. Now, you and uh, Gerald do the production work. Is that right? Uh, me, Gerald, and uh, Sauce. I mean, Mike. No, you See, can, I'm doing you it can again. say Sauce. I don't we Sauce. Know, <laughs> he knows who he is, even though we don't show it. This is the second show of mine he ain't showed up to, though. You know that, right? <laughs> I, know he I was trying to get him to come tonight. He wasn't going to be on the mic anyway, but I was finally going to get to meet the guy. But, <coughs> all, right, all right. I ain't got to know him. No sauce tonight, guys. We're no stuck sauce. with my gravy. I'm just saying <laughs> this is how it happened. <laughs> that's, that's the fifth brother right there. <laughs> Mitch Ross, Hamilton 16 IMAX. What else we got coming up besides Labyrinth with the flashback series? Uh, we, we, got know? A, we got a bunch of stuff, but... You know, I'm, I mostly just want to, you know, the flashback series you can find on GoodRichQualityTheaters.com. We go through a new season uh, every couple of months. Um, just want to make sure we remind everybody to get their tickets um, for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, I've got my IMAX print on sale and my GDX print on sale. We do expect those tickets to go quickly. So go to GoodRichQualityTheaters.com and pick them up today. Now, see, I keep mentioning the flashback series because I I love the flashback love series. It. I, I love it, and not everybody does it. That's a good rich thing. Yeah, and I and I'm flipping digging it. Yeah, I'm it's cool, man. It. I mean, you know, we I like the variety too. You know, we've had some Hitchcock films. We've done Gone with the Wind. Um, we've got one of those one of those. You've done Jaws. I saw I Jaws here, the original. Yeah, we've got Ten Commandments coming up. I think. Wow. So I mean, just just stuff that you wouldn't normally see um i mean a lot of people will do like rocky horror and yeah and, and some of that stuff but um you know just bringing back your regular joe movies is is cool well, rocky horror yeah, that is, is cool, cool but i mean you don't want the staff to have to clean up after that that movie that's why i've always refused to do it yeah that's, that's, stick in the mud that's just that's just too much <laughs> That's all it is right there. Rice it's just everywhere. Flipping. <laughs> and right. toast, if you, oh, yeah. depending and on what group you're with. Toil- <laughs> yeah. And toilet paper. And, and nudity. Newspaper. And you know. And playing nudity. cards. The floor absolutely flooded from all the squirt guns. I just, we no. were hoping. <laughs> <laughs> that will help, right? Right. <laughs> Once again, this has been Movie Night with JL Media. Hamilton 16 IMAX is where we're doing it in the Hamilton Town Center in beautiful Noblesville. Mr. Mitch Ross, thank you, my friend. Thank you, Johnny. Always a pleasure. Guys, thanks for being here. Thank you, Johnny. No problem. Thanks for having us.